Shalom, Kahala, Yahweh, Bashir, Melshai, Bashir, Rukal, Kadash, to all of my teachers, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the elect who the house of David reborn again in this generation, and Shalom to the 130 Asherala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the ever given cargo ship which was stuck in the Suez Canal and how that was a spiritual event, right? But before we get into that, let's read this. This is 2 Ezra 16 and 21. Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. And that's exactly what's happening now, right? You see victuals, which is basically food and, you know, the, your necessities that you need to survive, right? They're fairly cheap, right? Even though uh, up here in Babylon the Great, which is known today as America, uh, uh, even though inflation is starting to hit at a low level, right, uh, for the most part, things are still fairly cheap. You can still go out to fast food places and get like a full, full meal, you know, for under 20 bucks, you know, and feed, feed you and like somebody else. Um, but, uh, you know, and other things too, you know, it's not that expensive right now, right? Not to the point where people are starting to worry about where their next meal is going to come from. So, because the, the leaders of this of this place, right, I mean, Babylon the Great, are keeping you fed and entertained, right, which is like an old, you know, Roman tactic, right, of giving you bread and circuses, you, uh, the majority of people here in Babylon the Great, they're not worried about what's really happening in the world, right? People aren't looking to see what's truly going on, right? Everybody's just following the, the manufactured narrative of, uh, you know, getting the jab to have everything go back to normal. Well, what a lot of people are going to, uh, to realize, you know, sooner than later, is that, you know, with the evils that are, that are growing upon the earth now, right? With all the recent wickedness we've been seeing, from Jada Pinkett and, and uh, Willow Smith out there, you know, a mother and daughter talking about how they like women, right? To, to, to you know, Satanist shoes out there uh, being sold uh, sold out in less than a minute and, and, and so many other examples, man. You know, all these things that people, are, um, you know, they, they can see these, these things happening and they just think it's a trivial thing. But pretty soon what's gonna happen is that there's going to be sword and famine and ultimately great confusion, which is what we're seeing here in Babylon the Great. Because again, you know, this is uh, the land of confusion, right? The, you got the whole pronouns mess. You got uh, the corruption in our legal, economic, and, and um, you know, just the entire system's corrupt from, you know, from the top up to the, to the bottom. Right? That's where the great confusion is coming from. Right? But you see, what's happened recently with this whole uh, canal, and you can see it from right here, man. Look, it says, inside the 144 hour scramble to free the giant ship stuck in the Suez Canal. Now, if you're spiritual, you understand that the 144 hour or 144 is a very spiritual number, right? Now, why do I say this is spiritual? Well, Let's go and read this article, and then I'm going to go ahead and show you some other articles, which are, which should make it fairly evident of what's happening, right? Uh, Ismailia, Egypt. In the pre-dawn dark, Mag Magdi Gazmal sat in the bridge of, of the Masad II and stared up at the iron wall of, um, of futility. So far, nothing in, in six frantic, hazardous days of effort had budged the massive bulk of Ever Given, 
200,000 tons of steel and consumer goods blocking the fourth busiest ship lane in the world. Right? Day after day, the unmovable mass had loomed over a beetle-like swarm of machinery and humans, excavators, dredgers, and tugboats that dug and pushed and pulled to no avail, with the engines and cables of the Mossad too, and the other tugs straining to the breaking point. Every attempt to loosen gravity's, gravity's grip in that hull had failed on the hull that that had failed on each tide that deserted them. The waters receded to their unrelenting cycle. The tide is like a ghost, and we are trying to that we are trying to face," said Gamal. Now they were down to their last, best chance. On Monday, the sun and the moon were aligned. Right? They needed. Check that out, man. They needed to have the sun and the moon help with this, man. Right? To, to raise the tides and everything. We're aligned to pull Earth's water in the same direction, producing a king tide, one of the highest of the year. If the efforts failed again, the Egyptian government was ready to begin the colossal chore of offloading the Ever Givens. 1800 cargo containers one by one right and ultimately they freed it right but one thing i want you to, to, to think of this man the tide is like a ghost we are trying to face right so and also they're trying to loosen gravity's grip now do you understand that gravity is something that science can still not explain that's true right even now why is that right because these are elements that are outside of the human purview, right? These are things that the Lord controls, right? Now, why is it that this ship was stuck for 144 hours? Well, because the Lord, he is starting to bring forth the conditions for the coming famine, which shall take out many upon the earth, right? And, and how do you do that? Well, he backed up this ship, which again, there was an unexplained power loss in the ship, and it, and it for the first time in, in the history of the canal, it, this huge ship stood to the right and blocked the entire canal, right? And let's go ahead and read on. Let's just watch this so we can see what actually happened. The world was gripped by the dramatic recovery of a container ship that became lodged in the Suez Canal, the transit for about 15% of global shipping traffic. The Ever Given was stuck on the channel for almost a week, causing a huge buildup of vessels around the waterway. Let's look at how the giant container was freed. Refloating the Ever Given was a monumental challenge, and it all came down to physics, says Peter Badowski, the CEO of Pascalis. Pascalis owns the Dutch firm Smit Salvage, which assisted in dislodging the ship. It's all about physics, and uh, most uh, physical laws are not uh, that difficult, you could say. But uh, the trick is to make them work for you and not against you, and that's what we did. The 430-yard-long ship was jammed diagonally across the southernmost stretch of the canal. At least eight tugboats were used to push and pull it away from the banks, with the help of the ship's own winches. Diggers cleared earth at the ship's bow, and two dredgers were deployed. Dredging sand surrounding the vessel only had a minor impact. Sources said ballast water, which is used to help stabilize ships, was offloaded too, amid efforts to refloat the ship. We had a plan B uh, involving uh, water injection on the vessel, uh, because with the digger, uh, yeah, you, you, can, you can scrap a little bit of uh, soil around uh, the vessel, but not under the vessel. Uh, the same holds for the cutter dredger they used, uh, so again, you, you dig some, some soil away beside the, the vessel but not under. So what we more or less did is we used the water power that was in the canal with the returning tide to push the vessel where we were pulling it. And the combination of the two, as we hoped, at the end of the day did the trick. Smith Salvage has been involved in high profile rescues before. It assisted with the Costa Concordia disaster in 2012 
and raised the car carrier Baltic Ice in 2015 after it sank near the port of Rotterdam. Location in this instance was a major factor. It took nearly a week to loosen the vessel. The delay was down to waiting for two tow vessels that were heavy enough, rare in the region, to reach the site. The most important uh, characteristics of the environment is, is that it's in, it's, it's in relative isolation. Like if something like this happens at the port of Antwerp or the port of Rotterdam, uh, where we've done these jobs, uh, you have vessels just around the corner. You have crane vessels even around uh, the corner. Uh, there are so many uh, possibilities you can use, so you can optimize plan uh, A, B, C, D, uh, uh, up until uh, Z, uh, so to speak. So um, the difficulty is you, you're really yeah, in the middle of nowhere, stuck with a vessel uh, and no equipment uh, nearby. So that, that's the big challenge, really. So you see that? So that's the ultimate rundown of what happened and how they freed it. Now, again, another spiritual thing is that this happened in Egypt, right? One of the Lord's main playing grounds, man, right? The Bible is centered around this area, man. Now, one other thing too, this, even though they unblocked the ship and they got it free, the, the issue isn't over yet, man. It tells you here in this article, it says, Egypt's losses from Suez blockage estimated at $1 billion. Right, check that out, man. That's a, that's a lot of money, right? It says, the head of the Egypt's Suez Canal Authority told journalists Thursday that the giant container ship Ever Given, which ran again on March 23rd, blocking international shipping traffic, was being held in the Bitter Lakes region along the canal while an investigation continued with the ship's captain and crew. Right, because they're looking ultimately to, 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 to blame somebody, right? right? It says Lieutenant General Usama Rabi and said he thought Egypt had incurred about one billion in damages from the accident. He he lauded the experts and salvage crews that worked to free the ship, calling them the Canal Authority's most important capital during the difficulty. He said the authority relied on financial experts as well. And let's go down here. It says, uh, if it is not done, big trouble because in this case, according to the international law and Suez Canal law, the goods on the ship will be confiscated, Sadak said. And so if there is anything inside, it will be re revealed. And if there are children being trafficked, <laughs> check that out if there are nuclear bombs it will be revealed uh, the ship is expected to be detained for two weeks Sedex said both Egyptians and international investigators who are who at work of uh, who are at work on the case right now the ship is under scrutiny and they will not leave the lake regions where they are now being kept until the investigation is done. He said, there will, there will have to be an agreement about who will pay for the damages. We're talking about billions of dollars that will have to be paid, All right? And he tells you here, settlement can take time. So here, the point being, man, is that this right here, not only, you know, one, Egypt is going to lock the ship up and all the cargo on there, and they're going to hold this um, Taiwanese company over the coals because of this. Because not only did they, you know, cause damage to the to the you know canal, but they the amount of money that was lost in in the holdup and the problem that this will cause and it's going to reverberate throughout, right? Because so far, so it's going to take four days. To, to clear out the, the blockage, right? And that right there doesn't count on on uh, on those ships that decided to go around the canal, around the Horn of Africa, right? That takes about a two week, uh, a, there's a two, about a two week delay to do that, man. Now, you know, it's a week later, the canal's freed up and those ships are still uh, like, a, like a week, uh, you know, late, you know? taking two weeks around the 
the Horn of Africa. Now, what does that ultimately mean? That means that the delays in delivery, right, the delays of goods getting places are going to, you know, not arrive and people just aren't going to buy it, right? Some people are waiting and are waiting for things to arrive. Other people who would have bought things, they're not going to buy them because one, they're going to spend the money someplace else or they're just going to decide not to get it at some other time. Now, what, what is that going to cause? That's going to cause an even deeper gouge into the, the, the world economic system, right? And, and guess what the Lord is doing after this, man? Here in Cali uh, or let's actually read this. It says, experts estimate ship stuck in Suez, Suez is blocking 9.6 billion in maritime traffic each day. So you see that? That shows you uh, uh, how how bad the economy was hit for that week for those 144 hours that the Lord put that ship on, on a timeout to, to stop the the whole commerce of, of the world man because see the Lord is now shutting down the the, the system of the world man he's throwing wrenches into Esau's uh, system man and when I say Esau I'm talking about the Caucasian races right because even though this happened in Egypt everything the whole system of commerce and traffic and trade is ultimately controlled by the Edomite Empire, the Caucasian race that controls the world for the most part, man. right? And and uh, this is how the, the the world is going to ultimately be shut down. Because even and, and we know some people out there are saying that this was done on purpose, that uh, you know it was purposely you know uh, um, grounded to to affect China and stuff. And, 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 but even still, if that was the case, you know, ultimately it was the Lord who put the ideas in these devils' mind to do this, man. Because this ultimately will will cause people to to suffer, right? To and this is going to start the whole famine that we're seeing. Man. And and check this out. This is what I was talking about, right? Now, this is actually happening. Uh, you know, this just happened yesterday, man. It says is Southern California shipping back up? becoming the next Suez Canal. We're over here in California, down at the Long Beach uh, uh, Processing Center, or the docks. What's happening, man, is they can't unload these ships because um, all the, 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 the storage containers that, you know, the, they're basically still there, man. There's no room to unload all these containers, man. Right, and they're trying to move things out, but it's, it's, it's getting to the point where there's massive backups uh, of, of container ships that are waiting to unload the ships. Let's go and read this a little bit so you can understand the severity of what's going on here in California, right? It says, last week, a giant container ship blocked the Suez. Well, actually, I'm going to skip that because I'm just giving you uh, a rundown of what happened in, in the Suez. It says, here he goes, what, what went down in Southern California? According to the Marine Exchange of Southern California, 24 container ships were waiting for space in the ports of the Los Angeles and Long Beach. These ships were carrying millions of dollars worth of products, including washing machines, consumer electronics, medical equipment, and other goods. But these ships are stuck in a traffic jam that doesn't seem like it will be moving anytime soon. And as it builds up each day, the economy suffers. One is on its 12th day. That's almost two weeks, people, of waiting, and with no concept of how long it will be until they are on the move. Port of Oakland spokesperson Marilyn Sanford stated the jam in Southern California's ports correlates with an increase in of spending. The surge in e-commerce has significantly increased the volume of incoming cargo, she said. We've got 20% 20 per, 20 more vessels coming in over the last month, with six to, to a dozen vessels in the San Francisco Bay waiting to dock up for the seven days, right? And this is what I'm talking about, man. See, there's no room, you know, well, apparently there's no room or where they can, you know, undock these ships, man. And you see this right here, is just a, a small, uh, another small wrench in the system, man. Right? Because you see, the Lord is doing, he's, you know, he's changing things around so that way 
he could bring forth the prophecies that are written in the book. And what are some of those prophecies? Well, let's read one right now. This is Jeremiah 15 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whether shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them. Thus saith Yahweh Bashim Ashai, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are to the famine to the famine, okay? and such that are for the captivity to the captivity. Right? And that's ultimately what hap is happening, man, is that the Lord is setting up conditions in the world right now so that we, there's going to be a great famine on the earth. Right? And, and what's going to happen is that the people who are upon the earth, man, that the, they're going to fall by multiple ways, like it said here, man, right? To the death, to the sword, to the famine and the captivity, right? And 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 you see, this is 2 Ezra 5 and 1 that backs that up. Nevertheless, as coming the tokens, right? Meaning when you start seeing these prophecies, all these things that we've told you that are going to happen, you know, when the end comes, behold, the day shall come, the days shall come that there will be they which dwell upon earth shall be taken in great number and the way of truth shall be hidden and the land shall be barren of faith right and that's ultimately what's happening man. you see the people uh that are upon the face of the earth right now man they are being set up every which way man these devils are you know they're they're besides you know setting up this whole jab uh, psyop man where they're they're jabbing everybody with with poison to basically modify their dna right which i mean you, you know there's gonna be some crazy shit that's gonna happen down the road when people start realizing the the outcomes and the side effects of these things right then you're gonna have the the, the built the built up famine from the the lack of things being able to be shipped for because people aren't gonna be able to buy that much now now that their their uh, inflation is starting to hit, you see a lot of things are, are coming together perfectly, man. This is like the perfect checkmate move that the Lord is doing, right? And that being said, you know, with all these signs that are going around around the word, world, you know, it's time to repent, Akim, right? It tells you here in Luke 13 and 3, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. What does that mean? That means that if you haven't fully come into this truth, if you haven't committed yourself to learning about what all this is, if you haven't realized now that the only way you're going to save yourself from what's coming is by getting into the Bible and, and, and asking for the spiritual protection, right? Then you're going to be, you know, destroyed, man, either through this by the sword, the famine, the captivity, right? Death is coming for you, people, right? So. You know, hopefully this video was edifying. Hopefully this, uh, you know, shed a little light uh, on, on the, the situation that's happening right now. But, uh, you know, until the next time, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Babadash. Double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.